one way or another, whether we're doing jujitsu only match, you guys are going to compete in a tournament, or we're talking about jujitsu for self-defense and fighting, which is what I want you guys to know, you have to be able to deal with stacking. So the first thing we're going to start, I'm going to let you guys drill and we're going to play with this tonight, but the first thing is just to learn how to stack. There's a couple ways to do it. Tournament players these days are going to open up the gi and then pin in the armpits. Okay? If it's no gi, you can go thumb up in the armpits or you can go palms on the biceps here. And if we're talking about MMA, they'll go usually in here. Okay, and in both cases, let me trade spots with you. In both cases, you're going to get to your toes and you're going to raise your hips. So what I'm going to have Liam do is just practice nice and slow a few times the movement. So let's go, we'll try the first one. Okay, first one, head down. Thumbs up in my armpits. Okay, and now you're going to slowly stand. Good, and get to here, and then you can try and uh, straighten out your arms and rise up. Good, go back. Back down. Second one, maybe he puts his gi in my armpits. Right here. And now he's going to get his head over mine and start to rise up. Yep. And if we're talking about MMA fighting, what they're going to do is they're going to get their head up over your head. And they're going to have their hands kind of like this. So he's monitoring my biceps. Now he can punch me in the face, and I can't really hit him back. And he'll, he'll stack and smack me from there. Okay? So I want you guys to practice nice and slow. Just practice getting into the position. You can go thumbs up in the armpits. You can pin the gi. You can do MMA style. However you guys want to play it. But in every case, you're going to end up stacking your partner, meaning your hips are above your shoulders and your head's going to be up by their head. Okay, that's, that's what you're trying to do on, on top. You go nice and slow and relax back and forth. Make sure you guys are doing that technically and then we're going to counter from bottom. And now we're going to work the counter. There's two parts to this. There's, there's what we're going to do with our lower body, which is going to be the lower body, the, the hips and your legs are going to do 90% of the work as usual from guard. And mechanically on top, there's really only one thing that I'm going to, that I do most of the time with my arms and that you guys will need to do most of the time with your arms. There's a lot of other things you can do if you want to, but this one thing you need to know how to do to clear this. So I'm going to break it into two parts. We could start either way. I'm going to start by showing you the upper body part first, okay? So I'm going to put me in a, a bit of an artificial position just so you guys can practice. So you're going to kind of, I'll show you it works no matter what he does with his arms, it, but we'll start thumbs up in the armpits and I want him to be extended like this, right? See so his head's up. This is not what he's going to do in the fight, but this is for us to practice our movement, okay? I'm going to pick a hand. For me, I pretty much always use my right hand. I'm going to come underneath in the middle, and I grab my own hand, and I'm going to pull up with my arm. And very important is, as I pull with my arm, it's actually my legs that are pulling, and they work together at the same time. So he's here, and up in the middle, and now I'll pull, bring my knees to my chest as I pull up with my arm. Okay? So, as always, I have my knees pinched together tight, so I have good connection on Liam, right? And so that when I pull, nothing's lost. If your legs are relaxed, and you go to pull, you lose all that energy. My knees are connected tight, so when I go here and I pull, I get all that. You guys, are, with your hands in the armpit, want to be careful because if I put this on super, super fast and he uh, hangs on too tight, this becomes a wrist lock, mm -hmm. and then he'll just hurt his wrist. Mm -hmm. So it's easy not to get hurt, just move your hand out. But when I'm here, well, if you guys want to try it and see how well it works, you can try and keep your hand in there, but I'm telling you, if you Go here and connect it with your legs, you're going to break that grip, okay? So that's the first one. If we go um, gi in the armpit, tournament style, right? Same thing. I just need space. I'm going to show you how to make this space in a minute. We're practicing just the upper body part. Reach underneath, pull with my legs, and look, you notice I always wind up with an overhook and a necktie, which is a position we're going to find ourselves in all the time, okay? If he goes... Um, hands on my biceps or MMA style, which is more forearms, right? Same thing, underneath the middle, pull with my legs, and there I go. Pretty much responding the same way every time. You can do both, but it's much weaker than if you use one to assist the other the way I just showed you, like this. And remember, it's your legs that pull, so the same motion, all up at the same time. Okay, from all of those positions, you can do the same thing. So don't stack yet if you're the partner inside the guard on top. Just hold your arms out like that so they can practice the movement and then we'll 
put the lower body in in a second and put it together. Okay, go ahead, back and forth. Good, now look here, if he's lazy, there's a reason why if we take the gi off, if I wasn't wearing a gi and he's in my guard, there's a reason why we, I, the way I teach it is thumbs up in the armpit. Okay, go thumbs up in the armpit. And the reason is, it's harder for me to pull Liam's arm across his body for an arm drag, right? So if I go here, give me pressure, don't let me put your hand, right? Very hard. When he goes palms down, that becomes easier for me to do, okay? And the further he goes down towards my elbows, the easier that is, okay? So if he does do that, you guys can just practice this if you want. If he's down here, if they, they're not skilled at this and their hands down by the elbows, they're trying to control. And what you can do, go up towards my shoulders, I'll slap him a bit, he'll go to my elbows, slide it down, right? I come underneath and grab my own hand, thumb down, pull it across. The other side, he goes down, come underneath, thumb down, pull it across. Okay? Try that one as well. If I'm finding somebody who's a skilled grappler, submission grappler, they're not going to put their arms that far out there because this is so easy for me to do, right? But if you're finding somebody that doesn't know anything about jujitsu or fighting and I wind up on bottom for some reason, he's going to have his, I'm going to hit, he's going to put his head down, right? And he's going to want to control my arms like that. And that makes this kind of movement easy. And as I pull it across, I just extend the hand down towards his feet. And you can see how his back opens up for me here, right? So like always with our arm drags, when I go, I'm not just taking it over here. Now he can pull his elbow back and start to go base. I'm making a loop and I'm bringing it down towards his feet. Mm. See how that gives me that good angle to take his back. Mm. We're not working on the back take today, but just a good habit. Okay, so again, as you clear, stuff it. The other thing is, when I hold his hand down here, my arm's extended, it's hard for him to get it back, right, Merlin? Yeah. If I go like this, I go here, get your arm back. Just pull and fight, yeah, easy, right? If I go here, <clears throat> I just straight my arm, right, pull to get it back, it's much harder, because my arm's extended, right? Like there's been plenty of time to get the bite I need to get his back. Okay, back and forth a little bit more. In reality, right, he's gonna have his head down. Well, let's see, as his thumbs up in the armpits. He's gonna have his head down, he's in here tight, he's not letting me get my hand in, and then he's gonna wanna stack and extend just for a moment, right? So it's very hard for you to get your hand in there and do this, and so this is where we get to the second part, which is the most important part of what I'm gonna show you tonight, which is defending yourself against the stack by using your legs, okay? So now I'll have him stack me with any of those grips he wants. Get his, I'll let him get his ear, ear to ear right where here. It's my lower body now that's going to defend. So I'm going to straighten out my legs, pinch them together, and push away. If I have to, I'll shoulder walk. Okay? And I'm just below the hip bone. That's what creates the space that allows me to get in there and do everything else we're going to do. All my submissions, I'm going to show you sweeps from there, everything else. But it's all based on getting that space. Okay? So again, that's the motion. Now, I can go a little bit lower, watch, stack again. That was more towards the hip. If I go lower, down just above his knees and extend, see what happens to his feet? His legs start coming together, which allows us to do other things as well. So, you guys are gonna play with it, you're gonna alternate. Sometimes you're gonna be higher on the hips, because maybe you wanna go for an arm bar or something else. Sometimes you might go lower because you wanna pinch their knees together because we're going to sweep them out. Okay, so you guys will do both. So again, whichever way he stacks, let your partner stack however they want. Right down here, and then I want you to feel, just feel what that feels like. And let them try and keep stacking. That feels good, maybe come down a little lower. There you go. Go back and climb, see I'm climbing high. So if I want to go for an arm lock, or a collar choke them where I need to be, let them stack me again. Good work. Work. Down here. You just practice it over and over again. Give a good feel for being able to move yourself away. Your legs are very strong, so everybody here is capable of creating space if you guys practice that. Okay, back and forth. Go ahead. 
Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for frequent updates because we're updating this every week. And make sure you comment and like and share our videos. We appreciate it and we definitely try and respond to all the comments. And if you like what we're doing and you like the material, check out SPG University, SPGU. Uh, and you're going to see a ton more uh, in, in much greater depth than what you see here on YouTube. Thank you very much.